This is day one, episode two of my modular journey. And today I'm going to talk about MIDI interfaces. And I do say that plural because I wound up with two. Uh, and here's why. So why would anybody need MIDI interfaces in modular? Because I think part of the allure of modular is that there's, you know, you're, there's no computers. It's all in the box. Uh, however, I'm not normal in that respect. Uh, I'm not uh, an analog purist. Uh, I do want to be able to bring in either MIDI or controller data from uh, from outside the rack uh, because that's just how I roll. I've worked with keyboards and MIDI forever. Uh, so I, I did want to have some way of bringing MIDI in. Uh, I have an extensive array of, of outboard gear as you can see here, uh, my rack, uh, my, my non-modular rack. Um, so I did want to be able to control it. Uh, like for instance, I have the System 8 right below here uh, on the deck. This is, this is my controller for the, for the Eurorack. So, the, uh, so day one, uh, I wanted to pick something pretty simple that would just get MIDI into the board. And that pick was, uh, was this MM MIDI device uh, by ALM. It is literally just two channels of MIDI uh, it has a clock and a run uh, trigger for uh, for external uh, cl clocking. Uh, the MIDI in is a is a little DIN plug that that takes a MIDI cable. Uh, so this seemed uh, a pretty straightforward and simple solution to get MIDI into my rack. Uh, so that is why uh, MM MIDI was picked. It's about one hundred and fifteen dollars US, uh, and uh, that's that's really uh, really all there was to it. How I'm going to use it is basically the the MIDI or the or the CV out of the System 8 will will drive uh, these two channels because the System 8 has a what's called a performance mode, so you can actually have two, a split keyboard and each side can have a can have an uh, you know an arpeggiator or a sequencer. So that's kind of the the method behind the madness of why I picked something that was seemed like it was perfectly designed for exactly what I wanted to use it for. So. Uh, MM MIDI it is, and this this guy is going to live all the way over here on the on the far left, because this is where the uh, the MIDI comes in. So uh, actually, while we're here, let me just nail that in. Uh, a quick word uh, about something I discovered uh, late in my in my journey is these these beautiful things called Nerlies, spelled with a K, Knurlies, um, with these with these big heads on them. Uh, they they just make grabbing. Uh, grabbing and twisting a lot easier. My fingers still hurt because I do this 500 times a day. Um, but I, I kind of love the, uh, the the gnarly idea. So let me let me get this guy in here. You see me struggling there, right? Because, you know, what, what man hasn't had this problem in his life? All right. I'll put the power in here. And yes, I did check that the power cable is in the right direction. And then basically that's it. Uh, I won't make you watch me put every module in my rack, but that's the first one. And there it is. Off to the side, here is my MIDI dongle. It plugs right in there and now if I turn on the case now you see the system 8 is powered on the rack is powered on if I hit the sequencer play here uh, the the MIDI activity light is blinking so we're good all right moving on to the next MIDI interface it's just something that's really hard to, to find it seems like as soon as they come available they disappear so again, my, my pal over at Sweetwater took care of me as soon as the Poly End, Poly 2 came into stock. Uh, he, he reached out to me and, and asked me if I wanted to, to ship it. And I said, yeah, go ahead and send it. Um, so th this is kind of a future, a future requirement. Uh, it's not something I'm gonna use uh, necessarily today. Uh, but what it is, is it's basically a, um, like it, it has four gate inputs, four pitch inputs and 12 other CV inputs or outputs, uh, depending on which direction you go. Uh, so that, that is just a, a lot of, uh, of MIDI in out for a Euro rack. And the reason for this is uh, mostly because I do want to, again, drive these from sequencers externally. 
uh, or I want to send signals from the rack sequencer out to something like my Korg Kronos or the System 8 or whatever. So as, as I said before, the MM MIDI was, was MIDI in. This is uh, MIDI in and out. Uh, and it has, uh, you know, it could be operated through the dongle, you know, the DIN, 5 DIN plug, uh, or a USB directly to the, to the host or the computer. So, uh, and it's got a ton of uh, configuration in it. So this, again, seemed like a, a pretty sweet deal. It was pretty expensive. It was about $350. Um, but considering what it does and and how configurable it is, I felt like it was a, a pretty good deal. So that's kind of uh, why I have it and what I plan to do with it. Um, it's but it's a it's a long term goal. So this is not going to sit in this rack. This is going to sit over in the sequencer rack. So uh, I will not mount this today. So that's it for episode two about MIDI interfaces. Uh, next episode coming up. I'll talk about uh, the various utilities that I purchased along the way uh, to get sound in and out of the box and uh, just general utilities, so stay tuned.